this is Jane Lo, and I'm at the Singapore Maritime Week 2023 at Marina Bay Sands. And today I'm very, very privileged and very honored to have On Chin Beng, who is the uh, CISO with uh, Maritime Port Authority of Singapore, joining me to talk about uh, some of the cybersecurity talents and also uh, capacity building in Singapore, and also the recent efforts and initiatives by MPA, which is the Maritime Port Authority of Singapore, in the recent years in the cybersecurity uh, area. Area. So thank you so much, uh, you know, for joining us today in the podcast. Thank you for having me, uh, Jane. Yeah. I'm glad to be here to share more about what MPA does. So as you know, MPA, we are overall in charge and responsible for the development and growth of maritime and port uh, domain in Singapore. We, are, we play multiple roles. We are first and foremost the port authority. We are also the uh, maritime and port um, regulator and planner. Right. We are also the IMC promoter. IMC, and sorry, what is IMC? International Maritime Centre, okay. pardon me. All right, okay. So we are also the national representative on anything pertaining to maritime. Okay. And most importantly, we are also the champion right. for decarbonisation and digitalization in regional, local and international forums such as International Maritime Organisation. Okay, I'm going to ask, right, Please. okay, so for our audience who's not too familiar with maritime sector, right? Okay. So what does it comprise? Who are the stakeholders you're talking about here? We have uh, uh, a lot of uh, stakeholders from the uh, vessels, mm. uh, basically the ship owners, the charterers on the, on the, sh on the vessel side. We also have uh, port operators to the likes of uh, PSA uh, corporations, Jurong Ports, um, and we also have a lot of uh, ancillary services to the light of uh, PSA Marine that does the pilotage and also uh, bunkering activities, just to name a few. So you, are we also talking about logistics uh, operators onshore as well? Not um, just the logistic operator, if you were referring to, are the 3 PR third-party logistic operator right. that, that uh, works well with the port operator with the light of uh, PSA, basically uh, in the internal model when the, sh when the goods comes uh, from the mm. from the sea to the shore, they have to go to the warehouse. So basically, they are the connectors in that sense. Uh, so again, for our audience who are not too familiar with the Singapore scene, can you tell us uh, what is PSA? Um, PSA basically is um, our um, key port terminal operator. Mm. Um, they, they have uh, operation in Singapore. They also have operation uh, overseas. Right. Um, primarily for Singapore, they operate in Pasir Panjang Terminal, the city terminal. And as you may know, very soon, the operations will be moved to TWAS operations. Right, of course. Yes. Yeah, so there have been a lot, of course, a lot of talk about digitalization efforts Indeed. in the new TWAS terminal. Yes. But overall, there's a lot of digital sort of transformation inf initiatives uh, throughout uh, during this week. So tell us a few about what are uh, these uh, digitalization efforts we're looking at and maybe give a sense of what implications it is for cybersecurity? Definitely, Jane. You know, digitalization has uh, taken an accelerated pace, especially during the last few years of uh, COVID-19. And in tandem, there is uh, increased reliance on connectivity. And what does this mean to, uh, to us is that for MPA, mm. digitalization actually plays a very key role in areas such as to help us in making the supply chain more right. efficient, Mm. in enhancing the vessel performance, in uplifting the welfare of uh, seafarers, and last but not least, to help to the progress of decarbonisation right, goals. Right, right, okay. Yes, uh, there was a lot of talk about how we need to make uh, voyages more efficient, yeah. and therefore we need a lot of uh, data analytics, it and is. that's part of the digitalisation efforts. Yes. Right, so okay, so talking about uh, all these efforts, uh, can you just give a sense of, uh, for our audience who are not too familiar with Singapore again, a sense of, uh, you know, some of the recent MOUs that signed between, say, MPA, the Maritime Port Authority, and also other players in um, the ecosystem, the maritime ecosystem? Um, I'm happy to share that just this week, we actually signed an MOU with the Port of Los Angeles and the Port of uh, Long Beach oh, right, okay. on a green and digital uh, shipping corridor. Okay. It's an effort for us to basically have like-minded ports to come together in uh, efforts towards uh, decarbonisation. Right. Of course, along the way, we need to secure and make sure that the data that has been exchanged is mm. done in a secure, efficient and uh, safe way. Right, okay, so that takes us to our main topic of the day, cyber security, right? And as uh, we understand, um, the maritime sector is one of the 11 critical infrastructures, Indeed right? Indeed it is, Jane. And that was uh, uh, announced uh, uh, when the uh, Cyber Security Act was launched back in 26, 
2018. Uh, 2018, sorry, yes. beg, beg your pardon. And so since then, I'm sure that NPA has, uh, you know, embarked on a few sort of initiatives in cybersecurity areas. And I understand there's a few recent ones, like a round maritime leaders roundtable, if is. I understand right, it is. and also cyber exercise cyber maritime. It is right. So can you give us, uh, you know, some of the lessons that I learned from those uh, efforts? Definitely. Um, you know, as we digitalize, um, there is an increase in the um, in the in the in the risk that we face, and there's a need for a robust um, defense that is, comes mm. along with that. Um, because uh, before I come to that, maybe I, as you recall, a few years back there was this uh, Nopatiam episode. Ah, that's right. Yeah. And uh, there were two key. Uh, this Nopatiam episode affected shipping companies, and it also affected ports authority uh, ports in certain areas. So uh, there are two key uh, valuable lessons uh, okay. that was taken from this to me, okay. from from this. One is, of course, there's a need for us to enhance the cyber resilience uh, in the um, maritime sector yeah. through a whole of community effort. And the second is the need for early um, information sharing with the parties. So if I may elaborate, uh, if you allow me to, is that to enhance the cyber resilience, uh, it's important for us to work with the industry mm. um, to, to basically protect those critical information infrastructures which MPA has along with some of the port operators. And it is an effort for us to manage the risks. And this will, uh, we are doing this through uh, Maritime Cyber Security Operations Center that we are, we are currently operating. And this will be expanded into the Cyber uh, Security Assurance and Operations Center, whereby in this instance, we basically work closer with the stakeholders of the maritime and to enhance their threat information sharing, mm -hmm. uh, response, analytics, and also info, uh, threat information sharing of our threats. And in this, in this effort, we are basically raised uh, progressively. We were raising the cyber resilience of this um, sector through various projects with the industry, companies, and also research institutes through joint projects. Is um, this um, Maritime Cyber Assurance Operations Center, or MACAOC in short, will be coming on stream in 2025. Oh, right, okay, two years from now then. Yes, so to your, back to your questions on uh, cyber, on the round table. Mm. So just last year, uh, we signed, together with uh, Singapore Shipping Association, MPA and seven other uh, stakeholders, we came together to sign an MOU. And this MOU actually established the round table and members of this round table participate, recommends initiatives to name a few, is to grow the cyber talent pool right. in Singapore and also okay. to allow and facilitate accessibility to solutions and also to cyber talent in, in this, um, in okay. this uh, area that's much needed as well we discussed during, during the yesterday panel session right. and whereby the, the panelists do acknowledge the key needs for uh, systemic programs okay. to basically build cyber security expertise around the world and locally. Coming back to the um, exercise, the last two years, we did the uh, exercise cyber maritime series mm -hmm. in 2021 and 2022 with PSA Corporation, with Jurong Port and with PIL. And it's quite important to do this oh, exercise. Oh, sorry, PIL. Oh, sorry, uh, Pacific International. Right, okay. Line. Yeah, that's the shipping company. Right, right. It's important for us to have the shipping company to be in part of this exercise. So you have a shipping company, the port operator and MPA yourself? In that particular exercise. Oh, right, so okay. we Yes, in that particular exercise. And it was a very good exercise in the sense that we, we managed to uh, and create a better awareness mm. in terms of cyber security. We test out our procedures, we get to know each other so that in times of needs of a cyber incident, right. we are better able to get together and handle the incident more effectively. Right. Can you are you able to share about you know some of the scenarios that were exercised during the exercise? One of the um, key risks um, that was made um, known to us by a lot of our international um, partners is this area of uh, ransomware oh, right. and ransomware. Okay. So uh, ransomware, not just on maritime, actually it is a risk to many other sectors too. But we are not special and we are not exceptional in that sense. We are not um, closed off from this risk as per others. So ransomware is one of the key uh, threat scenarios that we play out during the exercise to make sure that our enterprise systems mm. of the various parties stay mm -hmm. Uh, protected, we are able to detect 
response, recover very quickly, contain the risk, ring fence it, address it, and exercise our escalation protocol in close collaboration with the central agent with uh, central agency in Singapore to the light of cyber security agencies. Oh right, the CSA. Yeah. Yes. Right, right. Okay. So um, I understand there's also a similar exercise during this week's uh, Singapore Maritime Week. Is indeed, that right? Indeed. Oh, is that something you can share with us, or is that still Definitely, not public Jane. yet? Definitely, I'm very much happy to share with you. Just on the second learning point of a non -patium, you mentioned about the importance of early information sharing. That's right. It's on this particular premise that uh, 11 uh, port authorities came together in 2020 to form this um, um, group. We call it the Port Authority CIO Cyber Security Network, or PENET in short. Okay. So this group established a protocol, information sharing protocol, okay. which we tested and exercised this morning oh. to look at how we can better improve the protocol. So the exercise was done in participation with the Chief Information Security Officer and Chief Information Officer of these port authorities. Right, okay. So what are the kind of, what, what are protocols in this, uh, in, in the, in this <laughs> Sorry context? Sorry for my technical <laughs> lingo. I should have explained that. Uh, protocol are basically a set of rules okay. of engagement such that in the time of incident, especially the first hour of an incident, right. normally uh, there's no time to think. Right. You need to have a set of um, rules mm. that have been agreed prior to the incidents so that when the incident was to happen, you will be able to just follow the rules and get the early information out and so that um, the ports can get early uh, warnings and they will be able to react before, hopefully, that they get affected by this particular malware. So, for example, some of the rules would be uh, how to spot, I guess, uh, malware uh, characteristics. And, that could be and, one of those. Right, okay. And well, one of the rules uh, principally is to establish what we call the threat level protocol, TLP. Oh, right, okay. Right, so it, it sets off the, the protocol or the rules as to how the information should be handled. Right. Who should have the rights to handle the information and who can have access to the information. Because in certain information, if it were to fall to the wrong hand, maybe abuse. Of course. So we must make sure that within the trusted network, mm. so information that be of use, but also is adequately protected. Okay. So uh, talking about the uh, information sharing and coming back to the point that you raised earlier about the uh, new center, well, not new center, but the next iteration of this uh, cybersecurity center, where you will be looking to partner with industry players to share Indeed, information. Yeah. So some of the learning points from uh, this week's uh, tabletop exercise will be used, I, I guess, adopted for, for, for this uh, center. Yeah, absolutely right in saying that. So, Mikhail, or the Maritime Cyber Security Assurance Operation Center, has this element of uh, threat, infor uh, threat information sharing. So, this center we will also be mm. working with um, a network, which is PACnet, and also with the light of others, that to be able to use it as a mode, as a vehicle to share early information too. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We, it's just a platform for us to be able to be connected mm -hmm. better and more efficiently, to be able to uh, give early warning alerts. Yes, uh, information sharing, I, I, if I remember right, one of the panelists uh, mentioned yesterday in the talent uh, panel that it is a key to developing talent and capacity building, right? Indeed. Yes, so talking about our skills and talent in cybersecurity, we all agree that it's very competitive. It is competitive. And maritime sector is, of course, also competing with other sectors to attract the best talent. So can you tell us a bit about the efforts in Singapore to, you know, uh, in the maritime sector or with, within MPA uh, itself, what are some of the initiatives to grow this talent? As we transform the maritime sectors for the futures, mm. talents and people is very key. That's right. So it's, it's particularly with this uh, portion that we are working very closely uh, and with the IHL, mm. specifically we are looking at some early uh, conversations with the light of uh, SIT, um, SUTD and uh, also Singapore Poly. Oh, uh, right. Sorry, oh, Singap <laughs> pardon me, uh, Singapore Institute of Technology, That's right. Singapore University of Technology and Design right. and Singapore Polytechnic. That's right. Yeah, to uh, look at cyber security program for various labor layers mm. of um, cybersecurity professionals, right down to those who are already working, mm. uh, to those who are not working. For those who are already working, some of them, they are actually do not have IT background, but they, want, they are part of the maritime and we would like to continue to retain them, sustain them, and retrain them into uh, cybersecurity. And in cybersecurity, we, there's one area that is quite unlike other sectors such as financial, which is mm. operation technology. That's right. And we do have engineers who are IT trained, but they are not OT trained. 
right. operation technology mm. train. So we are basically coming at a program to help to make to bridge that gap. Mm -hmm. to allow those who are ICT, information communication technology trained, to go into understanding uh, operation technology. Oh, right. okay. And that's one part. Uh, second part is uh, how about looking at those uh, pipelines of new graduates that we'll be able to train them, um, get them excited early in, in their course, mm -hmm. and then be able to feed them into our maritime industry. Mm -hmm. and that is very important to make sure that we have a sustainable um, pipelines of talent that's coming about. Right, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah talent and uh, skills and, you know, capacity building is also, also always a big topic in all these uh, cybersecurity conferences. And um, I'm glad to hear that uh, the maritime sector is also focusing on this aspect as well. Um, yeah, so uh, thank you. Uh, Chin Ling, for your time today. Pleasure is mine. Yeah, okay. and uh, for sharing with us uh, and our audience on the initiatives uh, undertaken by MPA uh, Maritime Port Authority of Singapore and um, in various areas of cybersecurity. And I believe that maritime sector has been acknowledged as one of the uh, sectors that is, you know, uh, uh, increasingly a target for hackers. So it's important that we give enough attention to this. And of course, ransomware is also a big um, uh, target. Uh, threat for all the sectors. So I'm glad that you know the cyber exercise that you uh, and your team uh, did or conducted a couple of years ago also look at this issue. So uh, it's great to hear all these initiatives and uh, thank you for all your uh, insights today. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Jay, for having me.